Hello, hello. How are you guys? Hope you're doing well. Hope you guys are um, doing good. Um, I am um, uh, running a little bit late. <laughs> um, hold on one second. Let me know when you're on. Make sure to say hello. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, let's see. Hope everybody is having a good evening so far. It is nasty and rainy here today, you guys. It is like um, just dark and overcast, thunderstorms. So we had a little bit of a... Uh, headache getting home. It took us an hour. It normally takes us 15 minutes. So um, anyway, here we are. <laughs> I know, Cindy, it's terrible. Um, so anyway, we're just trying to trying to get ourselves situated and get back to normal. Um, and um, we've got a couple of different projects we can do tonight, at least get started on some. Um, and we'll just you know, just kind of play it by ear. One of them, I have been really wanting to use this mold that I've had forever and I've never used it. Hey, Robin, this is like, it's like a mega pattern soap mold. Um, hold on one second. Let me get my son situated. That mouse is right there if you want to get it. It's right there, that mess. So um, anyway, so I thought we might do that. There was this box that I wanted it to do with the mermaid, the sea queen. Hey, Nancy, how are you? Hi, Laurie, how are you? Um, so I don't know, what do you guys think about this mold? So that's one option is we could do that, the box and I'll show you the box in just a minute. Or we could do a tray is another option. There you go. Take that into the kitchen. Okay. So the tray is another option. Okay. So let me show you this box. This is the um, this is the box. This was a thrift store box that I got from Goodwill, and it's like literally it still has the Goodwill tag on it. And what I was thinking was um, Sea Queen on this box and then maybe do these like shells um, kind of like with clay around the sides. If we do this, this is going to be probably a three day project. <laughs> um, the other option that I have and actually let me turn my camera down and I'll let you guys vote. So this is. So that was the first one was the, this box with the, um, sea queen paper and then this like seashells mold somehow incorporated or the next option. So I have this tray. I also got this tray at Goodwill. This is like the standard upcycling tray that everybody has and does. <laughs> um, but I was thinking like either this paper on it. This is the new Paper Designs Rosetti uh, um, Ro Roman Widow is what it's called. And I just love this paper. I think that would be really beautiful. We could also do the um, Botticelli, the Primavera on it. Or we could do the Botticelli Birth of Venus. So option number one is the box with the sea queen. Option number two is the tray with one of these papers and then we have to choose which paper. All right, so let me know first if you wanna do option number one, the box, or two, the tray. We are gonna do the tray. We are gonna, whichever one we don't do, uh, we'll probably do next. Yeah, two with the Roman Widow. Okay. 
All right, you guys, that was like, that was exactly what I was like. I was hoping you guys would choose that. And I was hoping you guys would choose um, that paper too. How awesome that we're all on the same wavelength, right? <laughs> Nancy, what do you think about the, the paper also? All right, so good. I'm, I'm glad you guys are with me there. Um, let me see if I can clean this tray. It's a little bit gross. Um, I haven't done anything to it yet. So let me find a little bit. I love this paper, you guys. This is the, it's new. It's from their, the Paper Designs, their latest collection. And I think this is just really going to lend itself to some very deep color, um, most likely some fine line crackle in there. I think it's just gonna be gorgeous. Terry, Terry, how are you doing? Oh, this is the other one, you guys. This is also gonna be upcoming. I don't know when, but you can count on us doing this one too. Um, so, hold on one second, I got, Here's my little piece of paper that I cut out for it. Um, I got this bottle, you guys. Look at this bottle. We're not going to do that. This isn't one of our options for tonight, but we are going to do it soon. Um, so I got that bottle, and then I was like, I love how pretty this is, this violin bottle. And then, um, like, with this paper on it, and then some molds and stuff around the side. Look how pretty that is. So anyway, that's an option for another day, not today. I might do that on my own. We'll see. I have a, um, um, Nancy, you'll have to let me know if you want me to do one of these like on the Royal Court, because I have a Royal Court Live coming up. I don't I don't know exactly know one, but I also have a Pentart Live coming up next week. So I might do that bottle on the Pentart Live. Um, all right, so let me just clean my desk here. I'm a little bit just, I'm very disorganized from being in the car for an hour and a half and not having time to prep my workstation. Um, so I'm so sorry that I'm so scattered right now, you guys. But this is mom life. <laughs> this is my life. Um, hey, Melanie, nice to see you. Thank you. Um, yeah, when is my Royal Court Live? So I could do the bottle, I could do the bottle on the Royal Court Live, or um, or I could do it on the Pentart Live, because I think that one would be a nice one hour, get it kind of finished situation. I don't remember when it when I'm going live for Royal Court, though. I know I'm on the schedule for May, but I don't exactly know when. Okay, so let me grab my paper towels. All right, so yeah, Paper Designs just re released um, an all new collection. So I don't, I don't know. I shared this story with my retailers. I don't know if I shared it with you guys, but they shared um, their. Uh, early spring release, I guess. And so we have tons of new papers in from them. Um, a lot of them are by this artist called uh, Rosetti. And this model here is actually um, Jane Morris, who is the wife or was the wife of William Morris. So I don't know if you guys know who William Morris is, but he's the guy who does all of those beautiful uh, Art Nouveau patterns. And in fact, we have had a couple of our papers with some of his patterns incorporated into them. So anyway, um, Jane and William Morris, I think their marriage was possibly a little bit of a marriage of convenience. So they did not spend a whole lot of time together. In fact, Jane Morris spent more time with uh, Rosetti <laughs> than he did, than she did her husband. And so you'll see a lot of Jane Morris and Rosetti's paintings 
um, as his muse, but also his um, his beloved friend, <laughs> if you will. They actually spent some summers together. Um, so anyway, she was uh, quite scandalous. Um, and she was actually a, an artist in her own right, but um, she wasn't very well known on her own. And she, in fact, she was kind of overlooked because of being involved in scandals. So it was okay for the guy to be involved in a scandal, but not, not the lady. So anyway, that's the story of um, Jane Morris. And she is going to be for, forever remembered and memorialized on my tray here. So knowing that, does that change anyone's mind? about which paper we're using. <laughs> it doesn't change mine, but does it change yours? Just curious. Um, I mean, Sandro Botticelli would be a very nice, safe choice. I'll have to look um, him up and see what kind of what kind of dirt I can find there, if anything. All right. So yes, I, I don't know um, if this tray is what what it is i don't know what what it is if it's silver or what but we are going to put some bonding primer on it i doubt i highly doubt it's silver um we're going to put some bonding primer on it and give it a nice good base before we stick that paper on so yep doesn't change my mind all right you guys <laughs> you guys so um let's see all right did you guys catch um terry did you watch the replay of um kelly and nicole earlier today i thought they did such a good job over on th decor i thought they made they did some really fun projects and i loved watching the two of them together i thought that was so fun so I was super um, excited to to kind of uh, have them over there. That group has been slowly dying. So it's nice to see a little bit of life injected back into it because I just don't have time. And I know Nancy doesn't have time with all the uh, royal court stuff and um, Terry doesn't have time with all her decoupage queen stuff. So I'm keeping everybody busy these days. Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay, good. I had to drop off cause I had to jump on a phone call, but it was really awesome. Yeah. So, all right. So let me hit this with a dryer and we'll see what happens. Better plug it in. Terry, you got to help me with my auction. I was thinking um, the 21st. Let me know if that works for you. It's a Sunday. Let me know.
All right. So this is just bonding primer that I put on it, which, um, as you guys know, bonding primer will stick to just about anything. Hi, Kimberly. How are you? Rima, probably because I haven't shaked it, shaken it recently. It's it's like watery because I haven't shaken it or anything. Okay, um, or mixed it up very well. Okay, so Roman Widow. This is the one we're gonna use. Um, this is an A3 size. So if you um, are on and you have this paper, Kimberly, I know you had some of these. I don't know if you got the A3 or not, but. Um, if you're a retailer and you're on and you have these, by all means, please drop your link. Um, always, guys, you know, we love our retailers so much and we want to support them. So if there's, um, if they've got something, we want you to shop there first. And if they don't, then you can use our links. But um, this is the Roman Widow. And again, I... I think you were on Kimberly when I shared the story of the Roman widow and the retailers group or Rosetti and the Jane Morris scandal. Um, but yes, this is, this is the Jane Morris model who was the Oh, you used the metal pigment. Oh, no, I did not. I didn't see that. I saw where you were working on it, but I didn't see that aspect of it. So I will have to go back. Tell me when, um, tell me when, when did you show that? Was it last night? Tear was a part of last night's stream. <laughs> yes all these all these little scandals so and that's part of the reason why I love this old art so much is because for me it's all it's like it's not always just about the art it's the story behind the artist and how the picture came to be and just the legacy you know really that these great masters left behind for us to be able to enjoy. And, you know, now I think truly it's such a privilege. And I think the artwork collection truly in the paper, paper designs categories, the artwork collection is my absolute favorite because it really helps me to, to bring that artwork into my home in a very cost effective way because I can't afford to own a real Rosetti or Sargent or something like that. And so, um, you know, I love being able to have access to these guys. And so I'm really excited that they keep expanding. Not only, I mean, not only this collection, but all their collections. And so, um, so I'm just going to kind of go around and, you know, make a little curvature. We are going to do uh, a lot of blending and I'm going to try to take it all the way up to the rim if possible. Mm. But yes, we are going to be doing a lot of blending here. Um, painting 
And so you guys know my trick. So these are curved surfaces. So now I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to tear into these kind of curved areas so that I can so that I can minimize all the wrinkles that I might otherwise get as I start decoupaging this down. That's a good one too, a vision of Flamita. The other one I, I am getting in, um, Kimberly, is the Zephyrs in A3. I have it in A4, but I didn't get that one in A3, so I'm getting that one in too. Um, so I love that. I think that's going to be so pretty. All right, so let me get this down. And let's just see what happens, guys. I'm thinking some fine line for sure, for sure, for sure. And I will tell you um, that I, I absolutely get with fine line, I get the best results. You know, I kind of decided that I'm not going to try to force dry my fine line for lives anymore because I really do get the best results when I let it dry overnight naturally, then come back the next day. Um, so I, I am not gonna force dry my fine line anymore. Um, so we're just gonna take our time. And that, if that means we have to start something else, then so be it. But I'm really, um, when I did, okay, awesome, thank you. When I did my, um, the Crown Royal bottle that I did recently, I did, um, I let it dry naturally. And I just took my time with it. You know, I didn't try to force it. And I can tell you, I, I, I got the most beautiful, fine line result I've ever gotten um, by just going slow and taking my time with it. So from now on, that's what I'm going to do when I'm using fine line. It really taught me a good lesson. Like, you know, sometimes we get so bent on finishing that we don't really take the time to do it properly. And um, I'm done with that. <laughs> yes, Terry, let me call you tomorrow, okay? And then we can figure out if we think we're gonna have enough time or not. Um, I do have all the pictures and all that. I just don't know if we need more time to prepare it or not. Um, and so I was thinking, cause I have like 35 pieces. So I was going to ask you also, if you think that's too many, um, this is Julie, this is called, um, Ooh, I need to, I no, I haven't seen that. Kimberly, I need to see that. I need to watch that movie. Julie, this is called, um, this is Paper Designs, and it's, um, what's the code? I don't have the code in front of me. It's Paper Designs. It's, um, it's called Roman. This is by Rosetti, and it's called Roman Widow. And, um, uh, it's artwork 0134. Artwork 0134. And this is in size A3. Yeah. Yeah. 
size A3, 0134. Desperate Romantics. So I do watch, um, I watch a lot of artist documentaries too. And um, I'll tell you another. So I, I watch, um, I love documentaries and like biopics and stuff about all these various artists. And so um, the Girl with the Pearl Earring movie is very good. That one is about um, Vermeer. That one is very good. And then the other one, the other artist that has this kind of shady life, um, Caravaggio was very shady, like very tormented, but also very violent. So anyway, um, I love knowing all the little stories and tidbits of information. I probably should have been like an art history teacher or, or like a museum curator or something because I find it very fascinating. Okay, so there we go. Let's get that on. Um, let's go ahead and seal it down. All the way. Okay, I think I got it on nice and good everywhere. Okay. All right, let me dry this. And then we'll start some blending, you guys.
So question, how was everybody's Mother's Day? Did you guys all have a good day? What everybody do? I'm going to go ahead and finish this um, rose pattern out here just because that's going to be too hard to blend otherwise. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, and uh, complete this pattern here. That. Let's see. Did anybody get completely spoiled? I know you got some beautiful roses, Kimberly. I saw those. We went to um, Maggiano's and it was about a three hour dinner, but it was so nice to spend that time with everybody. So my mom, we took my mom and then Heather came also. It was quite, quite a nice outing. So did you see what I did there? I actually um, sanded my paper before I uh, put it on. So let's get that. Roses, chocolates. Oh, how nice. That's awesome. Anybody else get the royal treatment? Uh, my husband um, booked me a massage for Saturday. So on Saturday, I got a lovely um, hour-long massage treatment. So that was perfect. KitchenAid. Woohoo! <laughs> Aw, that's nice. Well, it's still nice and very thoughtful, right? I mean, it's it's very thoughtful that the boys would would do that. Um so I'm trying to think if I should like try to patch up here with that. I think I'm just gonna paint. So let me grab my paints. We're going to work some, a little bit of blending magic. We're going to use the Pentar acrylic paints. We'll see what we can find. Of course, we know earthy brown for sure is going to be in there. Maybe this one. Let's get some earthy brown. There's some green tones. So see, there's a little bit of green tones in there. So probably some khaki. Let's grab the khaki. There's some hazelnut, kind of like the chestnut um, down here. These are all, they're like, it's my standbys, guys, right? It's all the same ones that I always use. All my earth tones. Um, this has a little bit of a red cast to it. So I might need my, that's, a, that's almost perfect right there. This is the light brown, which has a little bit of that red tint in it. Uh, I don't need the pink because I finished out the flowers here. So maybe this, okay. So I'm going to start with that. Let's see what happens. Oh, 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 how nice, Julie, that sounds, um, that sounds so nice. I saw this YouTube, not a YouTube, it was like a Facebook, um, reel of this lady who, um, 
for a hobby, she actually goes and like pressure washes tombstones. And it's really incredible. She says she finds it very satisfying. And the families, um, like she'll try to contact the families that she's done it for, you know, and they're always like super surprised and appreciative. So I don't know if anybody else saw that or not. It was going around on Facebook. Um, but I thought how, you know, like how uh, rewarding to be able to, to do something like that for somebody's family. Okay, so let's see what we got here. That looks just about perfect. This is just um, earthy brown and khaki up in here. And I'm just kind of dabbing it on to blend out that top. So I will probably need a couple of layers of that so that that white doesn't show through. And then this is browner over here, so I'm gonna get a little bit more brown on my brush over here. And then a little bit more green over here. Okay. Lots of blending. And that's what I don't think I'm even going to use. I was thinking like, because I'm going to fine line the whole thing, I don't think I'm even going to do any molds or anything. Quite possibly we'll, we'll put some wax along the edges, but, um, I don't even think I'm going to use molds. Julie, that is so nice. I, that is, um, that is just awesome that you do that. Okay. All right. Um, Nancy and Terry, you guys have some packages on the way today. They did go out today. So keep an eye out for those. So here's a little tidbit that you might not have known about fine line. So you know we love the solvent-based, um, or that's that solvent-based sealer that we use with fine line, right? And it can be very stinky. You you can skip the solvent-based sealer if you're doing like a project like this and you wanted to use epoxy resin instead over the top of fine line guess what you can so i don't know how many of you guys knew that um i am not sure if i'm going to do that with this tray because it's not perfectly flat and i don't know if my skills would um, would be able to handle that or not. I mean, I could certainly do resin just in the bottom, um, but then I'd still have to do the other sealer at the top, so. 
So if you did not know that, then you learned something new today. And it would not have to be sealed first. You could just pour it right over the fine line. Okay. So the other thing I was thinking I could do with this, um, because the pouring resin would actually, or the pouring glaze actually might be a nice choice on this, and that's going to stick and not pull as much as the resin would. Um, so I was thinking I could do pouring glaze over the top of it as well. Um, so I have a few options, but I think I'm sold on doing the fine line with this one. Just because this really does lend itself to that look, I think. And then with a little bit of like brass antique paste in there, how beautiful would that be? All right, so let me get back up in here. I've got some white spots showing. And since I also now have um, like a little face mask that I can wear, with that sealer, it's not as big of a deal anymore. All right, so over here, I have a little bit more of these kind of earthy tones. Um, if you use a food safe uh, resin, you can. The Pentart resin is not food safe. Um, so none of the Pentart products are food safe, but there are some brands of, um, resin that are, for example, that I know the art resin is once it cures, um, the art resin is a really nice resin, um, that is easy to use. And so if you wanted to have a food safe tray, that is the one I would recommend. But there are also lots of other, um, there's lots of food safe products on the market, but over in Europe to get those kinds of certifications, it is extremely difficult and expensive. Um, and so they generally do not do that uh, on these products. Because they're, they're meant to be kind of for hobby. Okay, so let's take this one. Um, we're going to blend that color out here. This one that I'm using, this lighter one, is called Hazelnut. It's another go-to. Okay. 
All right, and then down here, uh, we have a lot of red down here. So let's get some of that red and a little bit of this hazelnut in there. And of course I'm saying it's red and y'all are probably like, that's not red, but what I mean is reddish brown. This is called light brown and it does have a fair amount of red tint in it. Over here, it's getting a little bit darker. Okay, and then we will grab our hair dryer and do another, we'll just go back and like cover any areas that didn't get quite covered. Hi, Brenda. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. All right, so Roman Widow, Roman Widow, a nice uh, pre-Raphaelite. This is a, a pre-Raphaelite period. Um, I love all st styles of art, but I am quite partial to the uh, pre-Raphaelites and realism. Um, not, not a big um, fan of Impressionism so much. I do like, um, like Degas kind of, but more of his realistic works. But like Monet, you know, doesn't really do much, that much for me. I went to a Mo Monet exhibit recently and I was just kind of like, eh. Um, so, I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't own one. Of course I would. All right, so there we go. All right, now I'm gonna hit this with a hair dryer, and then we're just gonna go back over any spots that are um, a little bit missing, okay? 
So that's my blending, um, you know, and basically what I'm doing is I'm just stretching the scene using similar colors all the way out, just stretching the pattern. Um, let's see here, falcon, falcon brown, using a bunch of earth tone colors. So, and I think I'm, I put, uh, I do have some um, Pentart paint kits that I made where I put a, uh, some of my most used colors together. Um, Kimberly, do you have those kits? Do you have the neutrals? Because I think I have like the khaki and some of the browns and one of those um bundle kits if you do feel free to drop your link all right so let me let me dry this Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to come back over some of these areas that I painted um, and do like a little bit of a touch up kind of second, second-ish coat on there, um, which isn't going to take anywhere near as long as the first coat did, um, but just to hide some of that white that's peeking through. So bear with me while I get this on. And then what I'm going to do um, is I'm actually going to do a coat of, I'm going to do a coat of glossy varnish next. And then I'm going to let um, that glossy varnish and all this paint, I'm going to let that dry overnight before I come back in and start working on fine line because I really want this to be a piece that's gonna last for a long time and I don't want to rush anything on here. So I'm gonna take my time with it, you guys. And I'm gonna do, I think um, a coat of glossy varnish will really help protect and, um, and give it some, some more durability. So I am going to do a coat of glossy varnish on it and then I'm going to let it dry overnight before we start doing any fine line. Okay. And so on Thursday, um, we will come back, we will do some fine line. Um, we will actually do on Thursday, we will do the, um, um, the fine line with the wax. And then we will probably go ahead and do that solvent base sealer as well, because I do have my 
um, face mask now that I can wear so I don't get a headache. So I can do that now. All right. Um, so this technique of blending your paper out with your paint is called um, Pitarico or something like that, Pitarico. Um, of just kind of softly blending. So I am just taking right now, I'm just using this hazelnut color and I'm sort of dry brushing it to kind of make it all look flawless and blendy. Flawless, blendy. All right, I'm not gonna be able to do that over here though because that's darker. So we'll use the khaki again over there. It really is a gorgeous, gorgeous finish. Um, I just wish it didn't smell. <laughs> that is my only complaint. So if Pentart would make one that works that way, that doesn't smell, I think they would make a lot of people really, really happy, myself included. Can I just tell you, I was like, I knew I was going to give you guys some, some options, but in my heart I was going, I really hope they pick the tray with the, with the Roman widow. And I wasn't going to override it, but y'all, I think you guys like you're on my wavelength or you know me by now and you know where my, um, you know where my heart is. And if my heart isn't in it, it's not going to turn out as good. So this was a was definitely a good choice, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna use, um, I'm just gonna use a water-based glossy varnish to coat it all together. I mean, I did think, I really did think about maybe using that gold chameleon varnish on here, but I also just think that it sort of needs to stand on its own with the classic elegance and not, and we not try to get too cute with it because it's, it is just such a very classic looking piece. So I'm going to take the glossy varnish and I'm going to cover this surface. I am going to do a little touch up right there on her hair. Um, so let's get that in there. There, it's like an eraser. I just erased that little spot. All right, let me dry it one more time and then I'm going to do a coat of glossy varnish. We're going to let that dry overnight and then, um, off camera, I'll do the first coat of fine line. And then um, when we come back on um, Thursday, we'll be ready to do the rest of the fine line.
once I get that varnish on too, I can always come back and do uh, do more blending if I need to. All right, so let me dry this. Okay, now I'm going to take um, this one. This is the regular water-based varnish, which I can use because all I have on here right now is paint and decoupage. I do not have any um, fine line crackle on here yet. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to do this water-based varnish to protect my work before I start adding other stuff to it. I want a nice durable surface. Um, so I am going to do that. Ooh. All right. And I clean that up so you can see that beautiful contrast all the way around. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a soft brush. This is the glossy, Pentark glossy, water-based varnish high Nicole. And we're going to coat this completely, and then we're going to say goodnight and let this do its thing. Um, and then we'll come back on Thursday, and we will do some fine line. This would be beautiful just on its own now, like with just a, I mean, just the glossy varnish. That would be gorgeous too. It doesn't really need the fine line, but we're gonna do it. Gorgeous. Can I have pancakes or Captain Crunch? <laughs> you can have pancakes, honey. Get the girls to make you some eggs. All right, so. I don't know where they are. Go see if you can find one of them. I don't Well, you're going to have eggs. You need some protein, buddy. All right, so. I just want to make sure I don't have any lumps or ridges that I'm leaving behind. And then once this is dry, what I'll probably do is just flip it over and make sure my I don't have any paper um, lifting up as well. All right, you guys. So I am going to let this dry on its own overnight then tomorrow i will come in and i will do the step one fine line and then on thursday we'll be ready to do the step two and we'll be ready to finish it so you guys that's all i have for you tonight thank you so much thank you for choosing this <laughs> i'm so happy all right you guys have a good evening and i'll see you back here on thursday all right bye everybody